All right, so I was reading through a biography of Ayn Rand. Uh, it's the uh, Passion of Ayn Rand, a biography by Barbara Brandon. Uh, Ayn Rand being uh, the person everyone loves to hate these days. Uh, but in Chapter 8, there's a very interesting uh, section about uh, when she first meets her future husband. So I'll, let me read a little bit from that. It has some relevance uh, to Guerrero. So Ayn held her breath as the streetcar made its periodic stops and the man did not rise to his feet. Then the streetcar and her heart stopped at Culver City. She had to get up, she had to leave, she could not be late for her job. Slowly, painfully, she stood up and saw that he was rising too and hurrying to the exit door. She watched for a moment, uh, for a moment in dazed disbelief as he got off the streetcar and headed toward the studio gate. Then she quickly followed him as if a magnet were pulling her in his wake. Uh, he was magnificent, she would recall, describing his appearance decades later, as if her wondering eyes were still seeing him. So basically, uh, her future husband got off at the same stop, and they worked at the same place as extras in a movie. Uh, she worked in Hollywood for a while. Uh, I spent the next three days just staring at him on the huge crowded set. Uh, by the fourth day, I decided what to do. They were filming a big street scene, blah, blah, blah. Each time I watched very carefully to see where he went, he had a special routine to follow and a specific pattern of action, since he was a bit player. After I had my plan all calculated, they began shooting the scene again. I walked toward him, stepped directly into the path I knew he had to follow, and stuck my foot out. He stumbled and almost fell. He apologized and we began talking. I don't know to this day what he said. All I really heard was that his name was Frank O'Connor. So anyway, so the point is that, uh, you know, there's, there's a kind of, uh, you know, there's this kind of uh, a longing. She notices a guy she likes and she doesn't know how to talk to him. So, of course, she ends, uh, ends up tripping him. And that's how they began talking. And, uh, you know, there's a, you know, there's a, a similar thing that happened to me, although, of course, it didn't have a very happy ending at all. Uh, it didn't have much of an ending, as, as these things uh, often don't. But I was uh, traveling to Europe, and I had a transfer stopover in Amsterdam. And I noticed that there was a guy on the plane from Amsterdam to another city. Uh, he was wearing a checkered fedora hat, and I kind of liked him. He looked kind of nice. And uh, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to ask him out. I'm going to talk to him. And, of course, I have no balls, so I did not. And, uh, you know, it just felt kind of crap, like, you know, what, what would I say? And, uh, you know, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, the next time I, I see somebody that I like, I'm going to go, go talk to him, right? And, uh, you know, I, I come back, I go back to Amsterdam, and then I go back to the U.S. But on my way back from, from, uh, from another city to Amsterdam, uh, the same guy was on the plane back. You know, I mean, what are the odds, right? And, uh, of course, again, since I have no balls, I did not talk to him. I, I felt kind of like, uh, I felt like I, I didn't sleep very well the night before, so I was like, am I hallucinating? Am I making this up? But no, it was the same guy, and I had the same lack of balls as before. And this was, this was right, uh, this was out of high school. I, this was a couple years out of high school, in fact, maybe four years out of high school. I quit college, I started a business, and I had finally gotten to the point where I wanted a relationship. I had the time for it. I was kind of ready for it. And I was like, so how am I going to find anybody? You know, what am I, you know, it's, there's this, there was always this problem because in the gay world, it's like, well, you can just talk to anybody and they're gay and you can hit it off. But mm, never quite like that. I, ne I never quite fit in there. I was in this kind of nether, neither world where I definitely wasn't straight, but the whole gay world seemed a little off. So anyways, I, I didn't know what to say to the guy. I, I felt kind of like a ghost wandering through the whole world because I, I didn't know what to say. Now, with Guerrero, it's not like this problem has been solved. Uh, the numbers problem still exists. So I, I talked about this in the book, but like right now, if you're a guy and you're looking for a girl, half you know, half the population is girls. Now, all of that whittles down, and there might only be one in a hundred or one in a thousand girls that you like, but you start from a big number. Half the people are women. Well, I kind of start with those bad numbers to begin, like, like one in a hundred or one in a thousand, 
and it doesn't even get to whittle down. It just no, nothing really happens, you see. So uh, where am I going with this? Let's see. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, that's basically what I wanted to just say is, is there's, you know, it's, it's hard enough in, in the straight world. It's hard enough in the gay world. There's all this longing, this kind of alienation. But at least you can kind of meet somebody. With this, you know, I had to write a book. I had to uh, at least put my thoughts down on paper. And, uh, you know, it, it's just it's it's just been tough. And I, I guess that's it. I just wanted to, I guess, bitch and complain, I suppose. And uh, just, just give this story. So I think that's it.